So, Jack, how often do you uh, visit the Rotten Tomatoes website.com? And uh, how often do you uh, take their word as gospel? My wife Erin and I, we check up on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, never organically. We never go like, gee, I wonder what's, what's hot on RottenTomatoes.com. It's always when we're cross-referencing with a movie we're about to see. And I feel like a zillion other people do the exact same thing we do. If we're not sure about a movie in theaters or a movie on streaming, we're like, oh, what are the what do those people say on Rotten Tomatoes? I hate to admit it, we do kind of um, fall into it. Like, we, we do believe what they say, more or less. So we disagree with their scores quite often, but that's how we decide on movies. Like, oh, if it has a favorable critics and audience score duology, then screw it, we'll try. We've been lied to, though, several times by the Rotten Tomato me meter. But um, we, I don't know, we, go, we, we use it every time. Yeah, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes is just this dirty little guilty pleasure, man. There is, there, there's no reasonable reason why you should actually follow this because if all these movies get like nothing but six out of tens, they would still technically have a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's just kind of like, like does it really i've seen like so many movies at least recently I've, I've seen a bunch of them have like very high scores but you know overall you look at the critic consensus and it's just kind of like it's okay <laughs> like right. it's it's all right who cares uh and then audience score i mean even then audience score i don't know how much you can trust audience score i feel like a lot of people a lot of people uh hate the movie critics uh, and in many cases, they're justified, but it feels like sometimes it's like a war against the movie critics. If the movie critics don't really like something, then a lot of people will go on Rotten Tomatoes and, and review bomb it, anti-review bomb it, and try to get it up as much as possible. Right, which is very silly. Yeah, in reality, it's it's a fine, it's fine as a movie, whatever, like, it's okay, but... I, yeah, I, I do the same thing you do, where it's kind of like, uh, especially with new movies coming out. I remember when, like, uh, the, you know, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny uh, got its screening. Uh, it, 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 like, debuted with, like, a 55 or something. And that was like a, ooh, man, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so cool. I think now it's, like, a high 60 or in the 70s or something. But that's not as fun. It got fresh. It got to that fresh point, barely. Barely got fresh, but yeah, I, I, I just kind of want to play a little game with you. And also, just for the viewers to know, this is the second time we've recorded this because uh, there were some te technical difficulties. So the first movie I picked originally was Avatar, but we're not going to do that because we know the Rotten Tomatoes score of that now. But either way... Jack, I'm pretty excited to do this because we only really got through one movie last time. Yes. I'm down to just go through, just just go head first Love it. into some of these movies. Let's just let's just rattle off a movie. I'll rattle off a movie. You rattle off a movie. I rattle off a movie again. Whatever. We'll guess what the critic score and what the audience score is. And if we get one of them right, we'll get one point. If we get two, both of them right, or at least you know whoever's the closest. We'll get one point. Whoever gets both of them the closest get two points. Since I started first time yeah. on our first recording, yeah. I want to hand it over to you. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you can, you can, you know, hey, you can say whatever movie you want here, man. We were originally talking about the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, from the 90s before the recording corrupted. But, uh, you know, we can still do that because we don't know what the score is. Or you can go in a different direction. Whatever you're feeling, man. How about this? Let's let's resume where we left off. So, original Mario Brothers movie from 93. We rambled and ranted a bit, but um, I am sticking with my original prediction, which is critics 50, audience 62%. I think it's a little higher than the critics. Um, and I think you disagree with me, sir. I never got your score, though. Um, but I want to hear what you your predictions are for the original Mario Brothers movie from 93. Yeah, so the original Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, I remember watching on TV back in the day, just seeing like a random, like, I, I remember seeing the ending randomly, which ended on like a cliffhanger. I watched it again recently, at least the first like 30, 45 minutes before I went to go see Cocaine Bear in the theater. So this was like an <laughs> April joint whenever that movie came out. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, so, you know, I gave up watching the Super Mario Brothers movie to see Cocaine Bear. Have you seen Cocaine Bear? I haven't. I heard mixed things and from Rotten Tomatoes, uh, and I <laughs> ultimately opted out 
of Cocaine Bear. Would you recommend it? I mean, like as like a Netflix viewing randomly, like when you're just kind of feeling just a silly little night, man. You're just <laughs> kind of on the couch and you're like, you know what? I just kind of want a stupid little movie. Silly movie. But like, night. I think, I think the problem is it doesn't go silly enough or it's not serious enough kind of thing. Like, mm. I think it could be like really funny if it played it dead serious. Uh, or it could be like really fun if it went like a little sillier. Uh, the middle ground works for what it does, but like it, it, there's not like a ton of like super, super memorable moments. I wouldn't say I regret in my time with it. It was it was fine. It was a fine little schlocky funny movie that uh, I kind of forgot about the next the next day. But uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. Yeah. The problem with that movie is that like they tried to make too much sense of Mario at the time, which was probably just like Mario one, two, and three. Uh, and world and like yeah you know if you're if you're just like a, a big hollywood guy you're kind of just like what is this like how, how am i gonna make sense of this how am i gonna create a character and like plot and and just a setting and stuff because the setting in mario is just pretty much like oh you know like, let's look at the first game just blue sky brown bricks that's all it is so i think they, they went in a different direction with it. They tried to make sense of like, oh, well, there's turtles walking around. Where are the turtles coming from? Dinosaurs. Where are the dinosaurs? Are the mutants down below the city? <laughs> they give it lore and a backstory just because they had none. They had very little to yeah. work off of. Before I got cut off with my technical issues, I was saying stuff like, you know, the graphics in 93 on the NES weren't exactly what they are today, obviously. Because uh, we talked about how, like, the newest Mario Brothers movie looks ripped right from the video games directly, right? Um, almost a one-to-one -one scale. But back then, you know, Mario Luigi looked different. It was one of those, like, before the Harry Potter movies came out and people were reading the Harry Potter books. Like, before those movies started, people had their own, like, their own versions of what Harry looked like and what Hermione sounded like, etc., etc. I think you could argue the same thing for Mario back in the day. There was no voice actor in Mario, or for Mario, Mario in 93. We were years from that, right? That's why I think the, um, the critics would be a bit more forgiving, um, with a 50 for the critics, but that's, that's my justification justification i think it's low i think it's dead how, low how man low? i'm thinking i'm thinking it's a 27 by critics Woo. and i think audiences it's a 44 i'm gonna say that all right oh so let me write that down same all right i'm feeling pretty good about this so uh <laughs> oh, no. hit me the critic score is 29 jeez you are very close it's a 29 an audience score Another 29! Shut up! Wow! Yeah, they they completely agreed. I and the audience thought... score has 100,000 plus ratings. Oh, wow. Okay, so they hated it. I was very naive and thought like, oh, you know, mayhaps there's a nostalgia factor. No, they're like, f*** that movie. You don't even remember it that well. You said you, uh, you saw it like years ago in college. Right, I was, I was putting off working on a, a, a paper. You know, an essay. Uh, so I pulled an all-nighter, and one of the many ways I procrastinated that night was watching the entire Mario Brothers movie online somewhere, um, some illicit way, and not worth it. Would not recommend. Was it even of good quality, or did you have like no! whatever, like a bunch no. of watermarks on the movie? I'm sure and it was, just... Yeah, I used one of those. I couldn't even remember the website, but it was just one of those. Like <laughs> you had to click out of 20 ads and like 20 fake ads and 20 fake play buttons like you have to find the real play yeah you button. had to work for this one uh and it wasn't even and it was like in 10 parts too so like you had to like every time a 10 minute clip was over you had to find the next part somewhere that was like the classic youtube era of like stuff where like yeah. they post a movie in like 10 parts yeah they still they, you can you can still just creep around youtube and find some stuff like that but uh you had to work for <laughs> this movie uh, and, uh, didn't even board. write the paper and don't even remember the movie. So <laughs> pretty, pretty rotten night. That was, no. I gotta say. No, no, uh, being a, yeah, being a late aughts college student was a lifetime ago. All right. So, uh, for my movie here, yep. I'm trying to think what I want to pick from this list. I'll take advice from you. Do you want a bad movie? Do you want maybe a divisive movie? Do you want an overall good movie? 
Or do you want a movie like nobody's ever heard of? Do you want a movie that like uh, right. you know some people have heard of? Like what? Are, what are you thinking here, Scott? I want you to hit me with a divisive movie. I got like a. I mean, I got a couple here. How about this? Have you seen the movie, the Adam Sandler movie, Uncut Gems? <laughs> I'm laughing because that's the only movie um, we've ever walked out of because it, because <laughs> it was too stressful. For, it was too stressful. Oh, for, damn. For and she was like, I can't I can't do this. So we left <laughs> like 30, 40 minutes into it. See, I definitely get that. Um, but like when I saw this movie, I saw it on like Valentine's Day when you're on like Netflix. It's a romantic and, like, movie, I get it. Very, very romantic. Very, very, very romantic. I heard like, oh, it's a very stressful movie, and like, oh, it might get you like feeling stressed out yourself and all of this. And like, as I was watching, I'm like, I can see that. But for me personally, I just thought the character Adam Sandler played, he did it fine, mm -hmm. but like, he was just an asshole. He was, he was. He, he was an idiot. You couldn't root for He him. was an idiot. Yeah, so I'm just kind of like, I don't care if this guy ruins his life. Right. So I was just watching him, I was just watching him pouting the entire time. <laughs> I was just like, this guy you, sucks. And that's how you watched it the whole time. Yeah. I don't yeah. agree with his and choices. Whatever, yeah, and whatever bad thing happens in the movie, right. you know, I'm just like, good. <laughs> like, this guy is lame. We never finished that movie. Um, he he makes out okay in the end, right? Like, he, like, moves up, moves to a different what do you, island. What, what, with all well, what do you, money. what do you, do you care about any spoilers? Are you ever going to watch this movie? I read the spoilers, dude. I went to the movie spoiler. Okay. And immediately, I'm like, oh, so that's what happened. All right. Like, yeah, I get it. Like, all right, well, here. Spoilers. So, like, I didn't give a damn when he got shot in the skull and, like, all this other junk that happened to him. I'm like, right. like, I get why it's stressful and I get that it's like, oh my god, this guy is just spiraling. And I get, you know, that's that's a good representation of, the, you know, there are people like that all, all over the place, you know? And I think, I think, you know, like, it's, it's a fine thing to make a movie out of. Just for me personally, I just didn't care about this character at all. I just felt like he was such a douche. Mm. Yeah. I was just like, I just, and like an idiot too. Like, I'm just like, what are you doing, buddy? But yeah, I mean, it, it is a representation of like, a lot of people are like this, you know, that gambling addiction, man, you can't, you can't help it. But I didn't really care for this movie that much. I thought it was very long and uh, didn't really do it for me. But I do think critics liked it. And I feel like audiences were probably divisive on it. I feel like it's probably really? closer to like the half point. I feel like a lot of people kind of have that, have that feeling. I've seen a lot of people say like, eh, they didn't really care for this movie. But a lot of people really liked it. And I think, I remember when it came out, it was like a big thing I saw on like social media and stuff. Like, wow, it's it's a movie starring Adam Sandler where like he did like, he did a really good drama role. And I, I believe like that year for the Oscars, people were pushing for him to get nominated for best actor. Um, so I think critics would probably be in like the 80s somewhere. I think audiences would be a little around like the 60s. Okay. I don't know. What are you thinking? I thought it was like a critical darling. I think it was. I think we're closer to 90 for the critics and audiences. I would say like low to mid 80s. I I do think people gener generally were more favorable towards this movie because Adam Sandler does this thing where like once every 10 years he reminds everyone that he can actually fucking act when he tries <laughs> yeah. he can like he doesn't have to do the silly like vacation movies right he just like randomly drops it he's like boom punch drunk love boom uncut gems boom eight crazy nights no um so i'm gonna say 90 just 90 for critics and 82 for audiences so i will say uh critics gave it an 84 mm. and audiences 62 I'm gonna say 62. So I don't think curious. I don't think audiences actively hated it. I feel like it was just a little too much for some people. I mean, so, clear, me see. clearly for us. <laughs> well, not not necessarily in that. Way. I mean, like it obviously was, <laughs> but it was like uh, it, it was probably a little too much. Like uh, just I don't know. It was long, mm. and I, again, like the character was an idiot. Whatever. Well, my God. So, Jack, you were one point off. Let's go. Critics gave it a 91. Yes. Uh, audiences, though, gave it a 52. Oh. That was 10 points off from that. Yeah. A point apiece, I, so, I suppose. I suppose so as well. This is pretty wild. Wow, that's a sharp, sharp difference. 91-52. Wow. I think 
audiences were just kind of like a lot of people went to it because of like the the talk surrounding it it was like i'll see like if yes. something gets like a 10 out of 10 or something crazy people will be like well i gotta go see this and then they jump into something that they weren't gonna watch uh, otherwise right. it was a very buzzy movie i agree yeah so then they're like ah oh, this isn't for me kind of thing right uh and it wasn't for me i risk i can respect it i guess but i'm also kind of like it just that it wasn't my thing uh but that was my movie. What is what is your next one here? I got one for you. I got a real humdinger for you. All right. You Ooh. ready for this one? Yeah, let's hear it. I'm down. 2005's Charlie and the Chocolate <laughs> Factory. The Tim Burton one. I played the Xbox game of that last night. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I had to get footage of it. This will come out That's after, so but I will. That's weird. For Halloween, I want to do like candy games. Games based on oh. candy. Oh. So, That's a great premise. Oh, there's, I love that. There's a couple of them. M&M's had a lot. <laughs> and then there's there's really? a Skittles game on the GameCube that's called Darkened Sky. That is Why? It's fantasy based. It's like it's like old time fantasy based, like Lord of the Rings whatever garbage. And uh Skittles are but like Skittles. magic orbs in the games. And that's it. That's all it is. You don't need them. <laughs> they're just they're just oh. there. Either way, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What are your thoughts on this little uh, dinger that hums? I, <laughs> um, so this is this is a movie I've never seen front to back. I've only ever seen Damn. clips of it and some segments, but I just I I couldn't be bothered to see this when it was in theaters. Talk about divisive. I think this is another really divisive one. I think this this was like the start of the Tim Burtonification of like everything there are two different points in tim burton's career one where like critical darling you know he can do no wrong he's killing it he's reinventing the gothic genre really putting this gothic aesthetic spin to everything and then there's like post that like alice in wonderland and uh uh, uh dumbo and i think all of that started with charlie and the chocolate factory where it just became a bit nauseating it's like oh it's not cute anymore <laughs> uh, the gothic spin isn't like cute anymore tim so i'm gonna say it's probably barely fresh even though i've never seen this movie i'm gonna assume critics gave this one like a 63 and audiences might be a bit more forgiving i will say audiences will give it a 72 final answer this is something where you're starting to see you know like like the generation that grew up with this movie like this was their wonka yes. this was, this their, was their wonka, wonka. this was their wonka shit, man and uh they just kind of grew up with this so they're like oh this is the best that's why like with my friends and, and you know we randomly might say it's just like oh what, what's what's like your favorite christmas special or something and like you know if somebody says the grinch it's always kind of like oh you'd assume it's like the classic 30s i'm uh, not not 30 the 30 minute 60s yes animated special and they're like no <laughs> It's the Jim Carrey one. And I'm like, listen, man, I grew up with that one too. Like, as in, I, I had it on VHS in the sort. It has its place, but like, it's it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's it's like the same as that, you know? Like, it's it's a different it's a different beast. Well, Scott, you're forgetting about the Illumination Grinch too. That's gonna be Gen Z's and Gen Alpha's. Man, uh, I don't Grinch. think anybody has a core opinion on that thing. It's just there, ain't it? It's just there. <laughs> I've never seen it, but like from what I've seen, it's just like, at least with the Jim Carrey one, I feel like that one kind of uh, goes off and I, I don't know, I feel like it expands the, the story in a more natural way. I feel like from what it I've does. seen review wise of the Illumination one, it just kind of like meanders on for 90 minutes kind of thing. Or sure. at least the Jim Carrey one is like, oh, well, he, he shaved when he was younger or something. Right. I don't know. Right. And that was his big core moment. Yeah. That's something. It's it's something. But um yeah, it's something where like you're you're starting to see the people who grew up with that kind of stuff when it was generally like panned back then as like, oh, this is nowhere near as good as that. You're starting to see the people who grew up with that stuff going like, nah, that's my favorite one. That's the best one. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Charlie and the Chocolate Factory had as negative reviews as like something like the grinch i might have remembered seeing something like you ever go on like a wikipedia article for a movie and you see like one of the first things they say like this movie generally got good reviews i swear i got i saw that 
when I was meandering okay. on the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Wikipedia page, as I do on a, <laughs> on a Saturday night. And I feel like audiences didn't mind it either, but like when people critically look at it compared to like the 70s one, um, I'm gonna say it's like, I'm gonna say it's an 81 on critics, which that doesn't mean anything. 2005, like 2005 era stuff, I feel like 81 back then is a little more like, yeah, it's fine, <laughs> or, or something, you know, like 81 these hmm. days, I don't know, I feel I'm like shocked. critics are a little more, a little more, when they don't like something, they like something, like the, like the Pixar movie Elemental, that one got roasted by a lot of critics, and I'm like, it's, it it's good, it's a fine movie, may not do anything like groundbreaking, but I'm like, it, 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 it it's fine, uh, that like debuted with like a 55 or something. I'm like, come on, you guys, yeah. you guys are soulless. That's too much. You guys are just, <laughs> you guys are little creeps. I'll say for audience, you know what? I'm going to say a 75, mainly because I feel like a lot of parents brought their kids to this movie and they cried because it's a little creepy. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, I don't know, you know? They didn't cry because it was emotional. They just cried because it was terrifying. It's a little creepy. I think, because I remember like my mom told me, that she was like, I don't know, she had like one of like the babies in the family and she was like, I wanna watch a movie. And she was like, oh, well, oh here's God. Netflix on my phone. Oh, look at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Watch oh it for like five minutes, didn't give a damn. I'm not saying she freaked out or anything. Could say that for comedic effect. Nah, she just didn't care. So I'm gonna say 75 for audiences. And what did you say here? 63 and 72 for critics and general audiences. Ah, uh, you know, I think that sounds right too. Damn, okay, well, <laughs> either no, way. You can't, no take backs. <laughs> no take backs, I'm not, I'm sticking by mine, but we'll see. Because Charlie and the Chocolate Factory also seems like a, an, an, an Oscar nomination movie. Not in any way other than costume Effect. design or something you know? oh sure yeah yes. I, I feel like yes, it, yes, it yes. was nominated <laughs> okay all right so pretty funny here so uh charlie and the chocolate factory has an 83 percent from critics but no way a 51 from the audience so it seems like we Wild. both get a point there but 83 yeah. that seems very high. Very, very, wow. very high. Closer to the source material yeah. than 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Why does that matter? Right? Charlie and the Chocolate <laughs> Factory is for people who like their chocolate visually appealing and dark. What the, What does that mean, buddy? That's stupid. No, that's a terrible consensus. I think it's mainly because, like, yeah, the book was darker like that, I guess. And and the 70s movie kind of turned it into a giant musical. I, I'm, I'm actually... When I'm using my movie trivia powers, I feel like the author of the original book, like Roald Dahl, I don't think he liked the 70s movie. Now I'm thinking of it. Oh yeah? Roald Dahl's reaction. Dahl disowned the film and was infuriated okay. by the plot deviations and considered the music to be sappy and sentimental. He was also disappointed because the film placed too much emphasis on Willy Wonka and not enough on Charlie. Huh. So, well, Al B. I yeah. had no idea. But he's written some pretty dark stuff, like dark st uh, short stories, um, which I really have enjoyed. So I guess that shouldn't surprise me as much, but um, I'm way more surprised by the 83 critics gave it. I thought uh, that is well, well above what I expected. I will also say the 70s Willy Wonka was dark in its own ways. You know, you have that whole sure. tunnel of hell garbage that happened. I don't know. This one was... You had that whole thing where, where Willy Wonka's dad, the dentist, at the end. It just kind of happened. Yeah. It just it just kind of came out of nowhere. It just kind of extended the movie for another, like, ten minutes. And then that uh -huh. was it. Which, I don't... I, yeah, that definitely wasn't in the book. I remember reading the book in, like, hmm. fourth, fifth grade or something. But either way, yeah. Critic score is way too high. Do you think the audience score is justified? Do you think the audience score makes sense from your perspective? It does, because we do, like, the audience score does have the gift of, like, you know, um, what is it, like, 2020, or no, they have the gift of, like, looking back and more, Yeah. we have decades of comparison now since the movie came out. Um, so that 51 makes a bit more sense to me where people are like, wait a minute, this isn't like the old movie at all. Like, <laughs> that's how I kind of see it. But yeah, I'm really excited for the third Wonka movie coming in December because that's what the world needs. Another Wonka movie. Oh, another Wonka uh, movie. I hope they bring back 
Wonka themed candy and apparel in the store. Did you know they got rid of the Wonka brand of candy in the store no. aisles? As in like, no. like, like nerds and stuff. Like those originally yeah, were labeled yeah. as Wonka. They still got those, but they don't have Wonka on them anymore. I didn't even realize that. None of them Damn, say Wonka. I've, that company's well, well, gone. Next. I know That's that is wild. It is kind of weird because they pretty much only labeled stuff that was Wonka that wasn't chocolate. There, there really wasn't much uh, Wonka uh. chocolate in the... I only know this because, like I said, I, I played the Xbox game last night, so I did do some... You're a bit of a candy connoisseur. Yeah, from, expert from on the subject. last night. Yeah, <laughs> from a Wikipedia binge last night. <laughs> Either way, you know what? I have a movie that was also released in 2005 that... Uh, do you? Yeah. I kind of want to talk about this one. Chicken Little by Disney, the Ooh. Disney Chicken Little. I think this Ooh. is generally considered one of their worst, one of their worst movies. Even kids who grew up with it. I don't see many people who grew up with it are like, yeah, this movie was great. Everybody's like, fuck the dad. <laughs> this movie sucks. Like it's pretty much, it, that's pretty much all people ever say about the movie is the dad is horrible. The dad is pretty bad in the movie, but what, do you have I any history realized. with this movie? Do you know much about this uh, this little flick here? So I never saw it myself. I remember like the commercials and the posters and stuff. This is an early Disney CG movie. Like it's not Pixar, but it's Disney. It's among their first. I can't remember if Meet the Robinsons preceded it or if Chicken Little came first. <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the robin? Damn. <laughs> well, Chicken Little came first, yes. Okay, so Chicken Little came first first and may have been the first among one of their first forays into 3d oh god i have no memory of like if people liked the movie or not when it came out do you have a, oh you said oh five oh five um yeah. okay so this is gonna be tricky but going off of the very little i know about this movie um it must have been jarring it must have been very jarring for the shift from 2d to 3d for disney audiences like <laughs> yeah. i bet a lot of people mistakenly thought it was pixar i'm gonna say flat 70 critic critic score is a flat 70 audience score is gonna be less favorable audiences 66 going off of my zero knowledge of this movie <laughs> i watched it back I'm in the kidding. day uh yeah. i had it on dvd so i watched it a couple times there never a favorite of mine but uh it was something it, it it felt like it was designed for like kids just just to have something colorful on screen something a little colorful and loud and uh now when I, whenever i see like people do like you know four hour long video essays on on this movie or I, yeah. I, I i'm not sure if any of those exactly exist but i do know people's opinion of this movie oh, is that yeah. it's pretty it's pretty rough chicken little's dad in the movie is kind of a big just dumbo piece of garbage he just, he doesn't like his son. He's not supportive of his son. They also have two different last names. I don't get it. His name is Buck Cluck or, Bu or Buck Cuck or something. I don't know. But, <laughs> but his son's name is Chicken Little. It better and be Buck Cuck. Me and my friends watched this movie on like Netflix or Disney Plus or something like a couple years ago. We like to sit down and just be like, all right, what's a, what's a shitty movie to watch? Oh, let's watch Chicken Little. And, uh, That's a great game. It's a great game. There's not many winners, but it's a great <laughs> game. And we watched Chicken Little, and Chicken Little <laughs> did not hold up very well. Uh, this <laughs> dad just this dad just sucked ass. He was a bad dad, <laughs> bad father. And uh, the humor of the movie is very much just pop culture reference slash random yep. LOL kind of kind of stuff. As was the style of the time. Yeah, right? of course. It has like a lot of like squash and stretch kind of animation, which is kind of, mm. which is impressive, I guess, for like CGI. But like 2005 CGI, it's a, uh, you know, I it just, it's okay, I guess. But like, you know, it's still 2005 CGI, so it doesn't hold up as well as, it, as as other movies at the time. I think it's in the 50s for critics, and I think I think audiences, I think it's gonna be 50s as well. I think I think oh. critics give it a 51. I think audiences give it a flat 50. Well, either way, I think I got two points. But Chicken Little got a 36 from critics, and audiences Ooh. gave it a 47. 47 Ooh. by audiences. Yeah, this was this was a bit of a rough one here. 
not good. Bit of a wow, confused, 36, though. Yeah, bit of a confused little movie here. I feel like if this, if this, if this exact movie came out today, I think it would have like more of a 50 something from, from critics. I yeah? Like, I feel like they were a little rough on it back then, even though it's not a good movie, but still, you know? Why do you think they were rough on it? Just because it was 3D or CGI? Like, I don't think so. Kind of I think it's Disney's just comfort zone. It's it's definitely not the same as other Disney movies. Like like if you're if you're looking for like a Disney adaptation of a if a fable like this, this is much more like stupid bullshit. It feels almost like Disney's response to Shrek. You know how that's kind of like fascinating. Uh, yeah, okay. so that's more of like hey, let's take the piss out of some of these fairy tales, specifically kind of out of Disney. Whereas like Chicken Little was kind of the same thing. Like, like it's not really yeah. an adaptation of Chicken Little. It's more so like it, 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 it adapts Chicken Little for the first like 10, 15 minutes. And then it's like, oh, the sky is falling and it's aliens. Oh, like that's, that's, that's kind of exciting. Right. That's stupid. That sucks. Like, yeah. That's not at all like, no. God, yeah. That's the kind of movie I would just tune out of immediately. Like, nope. Well, I'd recommend like giving it a try. I'd love to see you, right. you come around and just be like, you know what, actually, I love this movie. <laughs> this movie was amazing. Man. All right, get me a couple of White Claws and, you know, I, I <laughs> have some fun with that. Well, what, what's a movie of yours here? What, what are you thinking here? Let's take it back to the year 2000. Back when the era of, like, gross-out comedies was the norm. Oh, yeah. I got the movie Road Trip. Oh, from man. the year 2000. Did you ever see that one? No, I haven't. I'm gonna have to look it up here. I was thinking it could it could go in any direction with 2000 uh, gross out movies. I was thinking yeah. like, oh man, uh, Tom Green. Yep. Yep. Oh man, you know we got to put Freddie Got Fingered on here too. I'm gonna say that at some point. Oh shoot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You said. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, no, no. I've never seen Road Trip. Don't know much about this one honestly, but I have heard of it. Uh, I was thinking with 2000 comedies, it could go in any direction, man. I was thinking right. you could say you could say anything, but I'm down to hear about Road Trip. Yeah. What do you got on this one? This is a movie I had never seen um, until Erin made me watch it with her a few years ago. This is one of those movies she grew up with that I never <laughs> did. We have like this, we have no overlap in terms of our movie interests and tastes. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> she likes just rotten, awful like rom coms and such, and she hates every movie I like. So wrote, she was like, you've never seen Road Trip. So we watched Road Trip <laughs> and like a few years ago. It's one of those movies that has aged like milk. Uh, it has aged exactly how um, you think it would age. It's one of those movies where it's like, boy, can't say that anymore. Can't, you know, <laughs> I, that joke, uh, woof. It's just, it's 90 minutes of that. So the question is, what did critics think of it in the year 2000? They probably weren't that far off. They were probably like, ah, well, What did is... Aaron think about it recently? Is she like, yeah, it still holds up. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just one of those, like, you have... I, I, I don't even know if she particularly really likes it. She likes... <laughs> it's one of those movies that she quotes from occasionally, like a line here or there. And so I think it's just one of those, like, you've never seen X. You have to see X. Yeah. Um, and so that was... That was Road Trip. Uh, it's just raunchy, you know. I think it's across the country. I don't even remember. It's something about college. Oh, no. He has to, like, stop a tape reaching his ex-girlfriend or current girlfriend or crush. Yeah, it clearly stuck with me, the, the plot. This Blu-ray cover I'm seeing says, from the director of The Hangover. So, uh, yeah, some big no kidding. names. Yeah. Apparently. That would be interesting, too. The Hangover trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Jude, talk about diminishing returns. That one people freaked out about when it first came out, like 2009 or something. Then when the sequel was right. happening, people were like, oh boy, same same movie again. <laughs> same movie again, got bad reviews because of it. And then the third one, uh, I never even saw the third one ever, but like apparently it, it is quite a bit different, but got even worse reviews. <laughs> it's amazing. So, like, I know. really did the opposite of sticking the landing there exactly so, but i do think road trip probably i don't think this did very well man i feel like this might be in the tens the tens you go that low i mean would you say it's a genuinely outside of not aging well do you think like in terms of like <laughs> the plot and characters are, are like anything like wow this creates a functioning movie or if it's just a <laughs> bunch of like <laughs> 
just a bunch of raunchy garbage for like 90 minutes yeah i mean it's all of that i think it just has a premise that's like not great it's one of those like loosely held together by by bits you know yeah. like every comedy of the era was just a way to get from one f funny scene to the next and that was how you wrote a comedy back then i'm gonna say this i think uh i'm gonna go 33 for the critics and then the audience 49 for the audience it sounds high but i'm gonna stick with it 33 and 49 are my two guesses i'm gonna say 18 and 54 <laughs> And I think before okay you're I think, spreading it all right yeah I think the audiences that that want to go rate this movie in Rotten Tomatoes are like I kind of like this movie it's pretty funny yeah I can I can hear I can hear that have you ever seen the movie Grandma's Boy I think that's what I it have. is yeah I saw this I on Hulu a couple 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 uh, probably a year ago or something at this point. Yeah. horrible movie god, god awful movie but like when you look on like imdb i just looked it up 6.9 out of 10 you know what going with the movie's humor that makes sense you know like it's just a oh, dog dog <laughs> i've been using the word dog <laughs> shit a little too much i was so i was gonna go to god awful so i was gonna say dog awful dog awful movie i like dog awful that's yeah. great you know that's a good hey, that's a god good term exactly that's what i'm thinking <laughs> it's a, a dog awful, awful movie horrible <laughs> horrible plot and all that but when you look it up like a lot of people are like oh, i love that movie that movie was right, so like, good there's totally like a nostalgia factor for that it's like a lot of yeah. people who watched it in college or high school and they were like it was the best thing ever yeah people just kind of want to turn their brain off and just watch the stupidest comedy possible then like yeah stuff like this and road trip if if it is that uh, would work for that. It so is. I think a 54 makes sense. So let me look it up here. Wow. Wowee. Okay. Well, the critics gave it a 57. Let's go. No shit. And audiences gave it a 65. Wow. Wow. And the, uh, the image... Uh, the, the, the thumbnail for the trailer on this site is uh, Tom Green with a mouse in his mouth. That sounds about right. That's very Tom Green. People seem to enjoy this movie quite a bit. <laughs> and critics that's tolerated it. Yeah, 57. That's very high for a 2000 comedy. Um, that means a point of peace, I think, right? Point of peace, baby. That's what we're talking about here. For my next movie, I'm thinking, what do you what do you want here? What do you want? Okay, how about, let's mix it up. Give me like a quote unquote good movie. All I got left are kind of like divisive movies. I mean, like we could okay, do Avatar. I'll divisive. I mean, we, do, we could do Avatar 2. That is a quote unquote good movie. Now nah, give me something else. Give me something divisive. Well, I'd say this is good, but like critics, uh, critics were a little divisive on it. It's it's a recent movie, The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's a good choice. Yeah. So did you see this one? I did. I did. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, I... I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, did you see it? I saw it for a bit in theaters. Uh, so during our first recording, I talked about how uh, you asked if I saw Avatar 2. I did see Avatar 2 for 30 minutes. I saw The Whale for 30 minutes in the theaters because this was during a big uh, challenge me and my friends tried to do where we uh, were at the theater all day and we tried to see every single movie playing in the theater. Like, buy tickets for every single one and, and go and, and sit there. But, you know, you can't see all of them in, in their entirety. You have to you have to get up, walk out, get up, walk out. The whale was a part of that. And uh, so I saw about 30 minutes of it. So I saw, like... That's like, really funny. I saw, I saw a middle portion of it. I really liked what I watched. I thought it was, like, a very interesting movie that uh, I definitely, you, you know... saw 30 minutes of it. I saw 30 minutes of <laughs> Before it. Before I had like, shit, 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 we gotta go. We yeah. Gotta go, let's go. <laughs> and we ended up going to see... Uh, in house party produced by lebron james instead what a shift what a fucking quite the shift. shift quite the shift pretty wild i saw 30 minutes of it and then i i bought it on like itunes and i and i watched the rest of it um because i genuinely wanted to watch it and uh yeah i mean like i can see why some people would be divisive over it but i found it to be a very very interesting kind of like uh just like a bottle movie where it's just pretty much like only yes. in that one major location of of uh of the main character's yeah. apartment and i thought it was just a very very interesting kind of like a kind of a psychological movie you you saw like his struggles and like why he was just kind of like you know he only had like a week to live at that point and uh right. he tried to make the most of it i thought it was a i thought it was a very it's not for everybody but uh 
I, I was, uh, I, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a good movie. And uh, I believe it was originally a play, and I can definitely see how it would work as a play too. Yes. But I do know critics were a bit divisive on it. So here's the thing. I think this is a movie where the critic score will be noticeably higher than the audience score, because I think the critics, everyone raved about uh, Brendan F Fraser? Fraser? Yeah. I think it's Isaac. Um, they, they raved about his performance um and did he won but he did win best actor i think that year right? oh yeah and you know the the makeup fat suit etc like that was crazy realistic um and i think critics pointed that out i think the critic score will be something like 80 85 for the audience i think eh, it's a bit more divisive i'll bet a lot of people weren't crazy about slash didn't quite get the ending um i'm gonna say where he uh, floated where he floated? Where he floated. Yeah, that he don't make no sense. Scott. That don't make. Why is he levitating? I never yeah, ain't seen I no like, fat man levitate. I do like. I do um, like the uh, like the whale ending explained type videos, and they're like, <laughs> see that? Yes, yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> Where it's kind of like twenty <laughs> minutes explaining the ending. I'm I'm a little like I think it's pretty self-explanatory. No, there's a final shot where it's like them at the beach or something. The beach. Yes. Yeah, yes. and like I. I don't know, if you're watching this movie and you need that explained, I'm kind of like... Because, like, they mentioned... <laughs> <Then> you <laughs> failed. Well, they mentioned in the movie beforehand, they're kind of like... He talks about, like, a time at the beach, like, when they were having a good time as a family and stuff. So I'm just yeah. kind of like... I don't know, I think it's pretty... It's pretty self-explanatory, but people are like, I don't get it. It's just, like, out of a... <laughs> why are we watching The Whale? My new favorite thing is, um... They're, like... I think it's IGN, some website, like just keeps asking, does so-and-so have a post credit scene? Oh, and yeah. that's the new thing. So I'm just imagining people, like, waiting for the post credit scene in The Whale, right? Yeah. When the fucking, <laughs> the bad guy shows up. Uh, yeah. Evil whale. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting carried away here. 65 is my guess for the audience, and then 85 for the critics. You know what? I'm going to play a bit of a game here. My predictions are going to be swapped. The exact numbers, exact numbers. Yeah, I think it was kind of a similar thing to like the uh, the movie Joker. I remember that got like, I remember I think like that was screened for like some particular critics very early, and then when it hit most critics, I think that's when it kind of got like in the 60s or 70s on Rotten Tomatoes. It was weird because everybody praised that movie so much, and even got like nominated yeah. for Best Picture and all of that. But like audiences were like, this is one of the best movies of all time. But critics yes. were a lot more divisive on it. And I think The Whale is a bit similar. Very interesting. Jack, I am very sorry. Uh, the critic score is 64. <laughs> Audience score is a 91. <laughs> oh Pretty my rough. God. Pretty you, rough. You really predicted that. I am I'm angry and impressed. I'm telling you, I do remember some general general vicinities of some of these scores man wow i really misremembered that for whatever reason i don't really know why critics were again it feels like it would have been the other way around you know i yeah. think i think it makes more sense from your perspective because it, it is a very artsy movie it's all in four by three <laughs> right. so right uh, yeah it's it's a it's an artsier little tale but why are uh there black bars in my, on my <laughs> screen i got a divisive one for you all right all right hit me with it it's a weird one 2020s wonder woman 1984 oh, yeah that's a that's a wacky one i basically so like i i don't really follow a lot of the 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 superhero extended universes on either side mm -hmm. of the political <laughs> of the political world uh right, you know, marvel right, right. or dc um but i do know enough about you know I, it's interesting from like a, an onlooker you know kind of thing where it's just like i do know of the general you know vibes or like what goes on with these movies so i remember the original wonder woman movie was actually kind of a surprising like oh that's actually a pretty good movie so like right. i think people were kind of looking forward to uh, you know, this one as a sequel and with 2020, you know, all the movies getting just kind of push, push, push. I think this was one of the HBO Max movies that were like, oh, it comes out in theaters and it's also on HBO Max. Yes. Which was how I yes. watched Space Jam 2. And, oh, uh, no, yeah, Scott. I watched oh, that no. instead of Wonder Woman. I saw Godzilla vs. Kong 2 as well on HBO Max. Those were the only two HBO Max movies. And I saw the first 45 minutes of The Matrix, uh, Resurrections mm. or... Is that, I also is that... started and never finished that yeah. one. Yes. <laughs> Can I just mention, do you have an HBO Max account? <laughs> or a Max account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a stupid 
just Dumbo that that app is or, or what a stupid ass that streaming service is. I got a new phone and all that. So, uh, and you know, I, I had HBO Max downloaded on it, but I, I haven't used it in like the past month or two. But the fact that they rebranded to Max, you have to straight up download a new app. You can't even, yeah, it doesn't dumb. update. That's stupid. What's the meaning of this? Why? That was a really weird, like, choice. I feel like they were forced into doing that somehow oh, yeah. with the merger. But, like, the whole new app doesn't make any sense. That was stupid as hell. Because so many apps. I mean, like, Twitter just straight up rebranded, you know, on its own. You didn't have to download a new <laughs> app to that. So it's just Don't like... get me started Oh, yikes. Either way, what do you think about Wonder Woman 1980? Yeah, we saw it, and it's it's fucking weird. It's a weird movie. It's kooky. It's wacky. Um, I mean, a villain is like a tiger woman, so like that happened. <laughs> LOL, that happened, but like <laughs> it's just, it's very bizarre. Um, and I'm trying to remember, like, I remember thinking, like, that was kind of terrible, I think. <laughs> um, and what did, what would critics have thought as well? There's, I mean, oh, shit. I think the audience score is going to be pretty, pretty low for this. Pretty, like, I'm, I'm saying 40 something for the audience. Critics might be a touch higher. Because I'll bet, man, like, you can buy Rotten Tomato critic scores to go in your favor. Like, I, I feel like that there was a bit of a scandal a few weeks or a month or two ago of Disney or some some giant corporation allegedly paying for positive reviews. And it's like, yeah, of course. Like, that's a tale of yeah. time. <laughs> so I can imagine they may have done the same thing for Wonder Woman 84. Maybe it didn't test very well for audiences. So they're like, ooh, we should probably oh, yeah. <laughs> artificially pump those scores up. So I'm going to say 60, 60, 60, 60 for critics, 40 flat for audience, 60, 40. That makes too much sense to me. I feel like the original Wonder Woman probably got like maybe around the 80s maybe maybe high 70s or something i feel like 80s makes yeah. sense for like original um critics like that one yeah yeah i think audiences were like yeah that was pretty good too I, I feel like they'd probably be around the same ballpark maybe 70s i think it's still a fresh movie on rotten tomatoes but i think audiences were probably just immediately like like you're saying i think it came out on like christmas day for hbo max and i think that probably yeah. made it that much worse for audiences like the, you spent your entire Christmas doing this, so I feel like I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go low. I'm gonna go 30s. Uh, not that I really think it's that low, but I'll differentiate it a little bit. I think you're more on the money here. So I'm gonna say it's a 66 for critics, and I'm gonna say it's a 38 for audience. Jack, I think you have a two pointer on your hands, but not in the way you may expect. Wonder Woman 1984 got a 58 by critics and a 73 by audiences. No effing way. That's crazy. I, I didn't expect That's it to what, be like that. Why so high? To be fair, I think I think a lot of fans of like, there's a lot of fans of like the DC universe. And they, they I, I, I see a lot of defenders of like a lot of the DC films that come out, you know? I just remember like when the movie came out, there's so many YouTube video essays on why Wonder Woman 84 sucks, you know, yeah. like it's, it ruined DC, you know, all that crap, right? <laughs> so that, hence why my score was so, wow, 73 though, there goes yeah, that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of want to go where another HBO Max joined just because I already talked about it. Let's talk about Space Jam 2. This wasn't Let's initially go. on Let's my list. I just no, it, it may as well though. It, we we have to talk might about as that. well. So you saw it? I saw it once. I didn't really care to see it again. I mean, like I watched, you know, I I watched Space Jam when I was younger, when I was when I was a when I was a boy, and uh, I, I didn't necessarily like love it, you know, kind of thing. It was more so like it, it was it was a fun little movie to throw on sometimes, you know. That that was kind yeah. of all I thought about it. I feel like as a sequel, Space Jam: A New Legacy does exactly that so i think i think acting like it's like significantly worse than the original they're both lame movies at the end of the day hmm. i hear you i hear that i think they're both kind of like whatever like five out of ten movies overall probably lower overall because they are pretty much just marketing machines but like in terms right. of enjoyment i think you can sit down watch both of them and have a decent little time they're they're just they're 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 fine little time wasters but i know critics hated it and uh audiences i feel like on rotten tomatoes they were probably a little more nice 
but I do remember like Ron, like people saying stuff like, "This ruins the Space Jam legacy. The first it one tarnishes. was so much better." And I'm like, "What? Like Wayne Knight getting inflated?" And <laughs> right? Is that? Do we put that on a pedestal? Really? Exactly. All right. So, what would that translate? Um, in, in scores for you? Uh, I think it'd be like a 27 critic. And I think, honestly, audience on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it would be a Wonder Woman situation. I think they'd probably give it like around like 70 or something. I do think, I do think a lot of people were like, I like this movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, see, I'm going to disagree pretty heavily with you, at least on the audience score, just because I think the whole movie was just... The, the fact that they, like, tried to jam in all of these um, IPs and franchises owned by, what was it, Warner Brothers? The fact that it's just like, look, it's The Matrix. Look, it's Austin <laughs> Powers. It's just, it's just like, look at, do you remember this? Remember Iron Giant? Here's Iron Giant. And I think that really rubbed people the wrong way, critics and audience members alike. So I'm with you on the 27, and I have to pick a different value. I'm, I'm going to say lower. I'm going to say 26, so I can get lower. And then the audience score, that's got to be low, too. That's got to be, like, I'm going to say 30 for the audience. Oh, so damn. Higher. I just don't think anyone likes this movie. I really don't. I don't think a lot of people like it these days because, like, what is there to talk about? You know, it's kind of like in the moment when it came out, I think a lot of people were like, Oh, that was that was fun, <laughs> you know. Like that's kind of that's kind of it. I I, I, I didn't really I care. So. I watched it at like 11 p.m. at night while I was just like on my on my laptop. I just put it on the TV. And man, that thing for it's two hours long. Like it's 30 minutes too damn long. And it doesn't need to be because it's the same damn movie at its core as the first one. It's telling the exact same story outside of LeBron isn't the dad he needs to be kind of thing. Like, it's just like, uh -huh. I'm like, ah, I don't care. And Bugs Bunny dies. Uh, he he oh, dies at the that. end, yeah. <laughs> just kind of pointless. I, I, I'll tell you, I never saw the movie, but I, I watched a couple of video essays on it and they all talk about how they kill Bugs Bunny and then they're like, psych, JK, he's oh, yeah. back. He we sacrificed himself. Him. He sacrificed himself <laughs> to save the rest of the Looney Tunes and, and basketball. Classic Bugs. Um, oh, I, I, I will definitely say, when I was watching the movie, it didn't really feel as much like Warner Brothers was trying to be like, let's advertise all of our stuff. It felt a little more like they were kind of like, let's take advantage of the fact we have access to all these properties and let's put them all in there kind of thing just because oh the space jam was originally just oh let's have all the looney tunes combined with basketball well, let's combine the entirety of the the company but it does definitely come across as like a giant ad for like hbo max which doesn't help the fact that this launched on hbo max as well as in theaters and all of that jack you actually came out on top with the critic score because it has a 25 a 25 on Rotten wow Tomatoes. however the audience score is brimming with a 79. People enjoyed Shut it. Up. 79? Listen, man. I think a lot of people like some dumb, doofus ass movies that they can just sit down and watch and not care about. They're not telling you, you know anything. What? They're just, it's just boom. I'm just turning my brain off and I'm watching Bugs Bunny play basketball. A lot of people are like Scott. that. I gotta turn off YouTube, man. Like, I really <laughs> need to get off. I need to get off YouTube because the way people talked about this movie, it was like they were talking about literal excrement. Like that, just it, <laughs> I, I didn't have a doubt in my mind about my low ass audience score. Um, so I am sh because of those the the videos I watched on it. I am shocked. I my narrow my narrow perspective is broadening here. That's the thing. I think like. For a lot of the, uh, you know, normal people out there who just wanted to sit down and watch Space Jam 2 with their families and just cuddle right. up by the fireplace and enjoy Wayne Knight getting inflated and all that. <laughs> like, I guess, I guess some people, some people just like some silly, dumb, fun movies, I guess. Uh, that's just it. I'd give it as a movie 4.5 out of 10, maybe a 5 at the most. It's fine, but I'd give the, the original Space Jam that, you know, it's, it's whatever. Sure. But do you got do you yeah. got a do you got a silly movie to, to follow that up with? Silly movie coming right up. Yeah, uh, you know what's very silly. Let's hear it. Um, Let's hear uh, it. Tenet from 2020. Tenet. Christopher Nolan. Hey? Tenet. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. and here's the deal. I have Tenet 
I put that on the list because I don't remember if it was like ranked favor or rated favorably or not. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it was divisive purely in terms of its comprehensibility. This was a movie that I watched at home and I was so like, I like Nolan. I like his movies a lot. And I was so psyched for, you know, another classic movie. And I watched it and watched it and watched it. And then midway through, I thought, Shit, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Darn it. I'm comp even more so than Inception. I am so lost. And I, I finished it like just to like prove to, you know, Aaron that I could because she was like, it's going to suck. And I was like, you don't. You don't know that it's gonna be amazing. Just watch. <laughs> and then, like halfway through, I'm like, "She's right." <laughs> I hate when she's right. So I'm really mad, and I'm sure like everyone else who's watching this is like, "You idiot!" Tenet was so easy to understand. Not for me. I didn't get the whole reversibility <laughs> of it, and I'm wondering if critics thought the same way I did, both critics and audience members. So that's why I put it on this list. I remember this just being kind of like the big push in 2020 to like reopen movie theaters and all of that. Other than that, I didn't really look into this movie all much other than knowing, oh, it's the, the new Christopher Nolan movie, which obviously something like Oppenheimer is just a, a far greater success in terms of people talking about it and also just like financially. Cause like th this did well uh, in 2020, but it's still like, I, I, I feel like it's definitely kind of like a, a Nolan film that like, you know, people went to and people enjoyed, but it's also like, like not not one of the the biggest one of his biggest movies really. I'd say high seventies, low eighties for for critic score, and I honestly say yeah, the same okay. for audience. I I feel like it's very similar. Darn it, that's really good. Like those are both very good guesses, and I'm still, I'm I'm still working on mine. How about mid seventies for me? Like seventy five for critics, and then audience. I'm gonna also say seventy five. I'll say seventy five <laughs> squared. 75 both, 75 both well yeah I, i'm Just, gonna say up oh, go on no that's all I, I i i'm trying to justify my score and it's like i don't really have much except like i just i i don't know a lot of people that love this movie right yeah that love the love it the way that they love like you know dark knight or it, it, whatever yeah um but <laughs> I just didn't get it. And I hate that I didn't get it. <laughs> but I feel like 75 is like middling scores for, for both. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, how about you? I'm going to say 83, 78. I think it did well, but like it's, uh, you know, like an 83 is like, that's good. But like the, that, that's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory territory, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, kind of there. So and 78, I just feel like, like you said, you know, like maybe considering that some audiences were like, I don't get it. Uh, but I, I think it. I, I never saw anybody say it was bad. I never saw anybody say it was mediocre sure. or anything. So, like, I'm going to say 78. Ooh, okay. Well, critics gave it a 69 on Rotten yes, Tomatoes. Yes, no way. And uh, audiences gave it a 76, which technically puts you... Oh, well, my actually, God. Yeah, yeah, it puts you closer. That's wild. That is wild. That I was is not expecting wild. to win that. I have a theory that a lot of people upvoted it because they're nolan fans or nolan stands but i feel like a lot more people aren't willing to admit they also didn't get it yeah. i think no one wants to admit like oh, i didn't get tenet everyone's like no i, I got i got it i loved it i really lo i totally get it like no one wants to admit that i'm proud i'm proud to admit i'm simple <laughs> and i yeah. didn't get the reversal thing anyways that's that's really funny i'll take those two points happily well i'll gladly give those two points to you because for my movie, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a Daddy Day Camp from <laughs> 2000 right. something, 2007, starring uh, yeah. uh, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. It's a sequel to Daddy Day Care, starring Eddie Murphy. I saw this on Netflix one day. I saw the original Daddy Day Care in theaters when I was younger, and uh, I mm. recently saw it on Netflix like a year or so ago. And it's a fine little family movie, nothing more, nothing less. You know, you forget about it. Who cares? Uh, but then Daddy Day Camp. They recast everybody, but they keep it going. Like, I'm kind of like, okay, okay, weird as hell. They're playing the same characters, but it's a new cast. That's rough when movies do that. They don't even continue the storyline or anything past like, well, uh, I got to expand daddy daycare. I'll make a camp. So I'm just like, you could have just easily just made this like, oh, it's another daddy daycare and, and like whatever. Right. Just, just like, it's in the franchise, but it's a different daddy. <laughs> 
He has a day camp. Yeah, this, this movie's just dog ass, man. It's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. That's just all. That's just straight up. It's just a bad movie. Have you ever seen Daddy Day Camp? Do you even know Daddy Day Camp? I'm only peripherally aware of it. I've seen neither um, Care nor Camp. Um, I yeah. haven't seen either film. I vaguely remember a poster here or there. So you're saying Daddy Day Camp is one of those, <laughs> those very unfortunate sequels where no one from the original wants to come back so no. they just they i love it i think it was meant to be like a direct-to-video sequel one of those things but they ended up theatrically yeah. releasing it oh they did i didn't realize i thought it was straight to video it's a theatrical oh, no. it's a theatrical buddy uh huh. and uh yeah it's uh it's it's pretty bad i mean daddy daycare already got pretty pretty raw reviews because you know it's, it's not a great movie but it's just you know for what it is it's whatever throw your kid in front of that it's fine daddy day camp not so much it's just it's it's significantly worse i'm looking at movie posters to help influence my final choice that's fair like how how cringe the the poster is and how obnoxious the big red font is that's going to factor into my final scores yeah yeah that looks pretty terrible this summer is going to be intense that's their that's their very cool little it wasn't uh, stinger it wasn't intense i'm telling you <laughs> i don't think there were barely even any tents in the movie that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome it's just not um, a big it's I'm, not a big plot element that's a dumb tagline oh this is back when movies had websites there's on the bottom of the film poster is sony.com slash daddy day camp in case uh, you wanted more you know really cool uh, fun trivia and facts about daddy day camp i'm looking I'm it up say one sec i'm looking up the website oh i mean oh, there's it no way it's redirects way. to sonypictures.com and it's just Lame. uh just cuba gooding jr uh getting pulled against his will by kids into a tent <laughs> With a giant raccoon on top of the flag. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm looking at. Um, <laughs> well, well, what do you think? I'm going to tell you, my scores are 12 and 20. 12 for critics and 20 for audiences. All right. I'm not going any higher on either. Oh, based damn. Off the trailer no budget. just told me. No budge. Well, I'm going no, I can't five. Be. I'm going five and yes. 23. I'm going a little higher because, again, you know, like, there's going to be some of those kids that are like, I like this movie. You know, like, just like grew up with it right grew up with it or the the parents were like that was so sweet <laughs> that, that was really such came a silly together movie. At the end. uh yeah so daddy day camp on ron tomatoes we're looking at oh the fabled one percent on ron tomatoes <laughs> and it has a 37 on audience so I'm getting Damn. those two points right there, yes, buddy. Yes, you are. That was a 1%. great one. <laughs> one percent. Damn. Yeah, pretty rotten. That means one person was like, kind of liked it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That was pretty good. I don't know if they actually factor in like the rating it gets outside of like if it's good or if it's bad. So like, I don't know. The one percent might be like, so it has 81 reviews. So 80 reviews were dead rotten well one review might have been like a six out of ten i don't know if it would be a two right. percent if that one review was like a 10 out of 10 or something but i don't know rotten tomatoes is weird but i think we could maybe do like two more movies each i think we might uh, have two yeah. more movies in us and i think we can definitely think we can do that i think that should round us out pretty well have us a good a good dvd collection to to strive for there okay if i'm picking a movie do i have to have seen it no no god no Never. Power Rangers 2017. The 2017 oh. Power Rangers movie. I think I remember that movie getting decent reviews, weirdly enough. I do too. Either it got decent reviews or it did pretty good at the box office. N not one or the other, though. <laughs> Which is funny oh, no. because this is one of those movies that came and went. No one ever talks about it. Yeah. Ever. Like, it, it, it probably did well in the box office, but for whatever reason, it's not brought up. There's no like buzz about a sequel. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, that thing that happened, you know, f six years ago. I saw it, not in theaters, but I saw it like at home at one point. I was like, I'm bored. I And I grew up on Power Rangers. I had a bunch of Megazords as a kid growing <laughs> up, right? I dressed up as them for Halloween. So yeah, I'll see this movie. And it was cute. I was like, this is pretty good. Like if they put a fun modern spin on it, Brian mm -hmm. Cranston was a good Zordon. And oh, who was Rita? She was, I, I forget the actress who played Rita. Uh, she was awesome. The question is, what did critics think about it? I think, I think it was fresh. 
I would say so boy. I would say 70 fresh for critics. For the plebs, for the peasants and <laughs> audience members, I would have to go a little higher. Not too much higher though. I would say 75. I'll bet it scratched a, a little itch for them. Those are Damn. my two guesses. <laughs> Yeah, what about I, you? I'm gonna say a 68 and a 77. I do agree with you. From what I remember, and like I, I don't, I don't recall seeing anything about this movie other than like the poster. But I do remember it did fine. Like it was like, oh, that's okay. But I feel like if it did financially well, which I feel like it probably made like a couple hundred million at the box office, but it probably didn't break even. I, I feel like that's mm, probably why okay. like. I don't think it did. I feel like it was like it grossed a decent amount, but like it probably yeah. just wasn't enough to recoup the budget uh, or the cost. Critics gave it a 51. No shit. Yeah, right. a 51. And audiences gave it a 65. So they were just like, oh, that's wow. okay. Yeah, that's a little wild. That's the definition of mid, I guess. Like, yeah. Right Power Rangers middle. has neither the campy fun of its TV predecessor nor the blockbuster action of its cinematic superhero competitors, and sadly never quite manages to shift into turbo for some good old fashioned morph into I hate the critical, like whatever, <laughs> their stupid you little like, like the shoehorn blurbs. I hate it. It's so dumb. They try to throw so many puns in there and stuff. And it's just Pokemon, whenever it's based on a property. Theaters. Yeah, when it when it's when it's like when it's stuff like based on a property, it shows you how much yeah. the critics don't know diddly dick about what they're right. talking about. And that's why I'm kind of like, what what are these critics doing half the time? Like we were talking like with the Mario movie, how critics didn't really like it. No, no, it was on the Tetris movie. It was on the Tetris movie that went on like Apple TV or something. Right. And um Somebody said like, no, listen, uh, I've never, I've never played Tetris, but uh, I'm like, what the, who are you? <laughs> well, I've how, never how played a video game. I've never played Tetris. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> how'd you skip Tetris? Yeah. That's a yeah. It's, a, it's like the one you don't you skip. Do I'm like, I don't get that. That's weird. Whatever. I don't like the critic pun stuff or it's just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. But you yeah. So, with it, yeah. so I think you get it on the audience score and I get it. On the critical score there. Another one apiece. Yeah. Which neutralizes the score. It means nothing. <laughs> I'm going to go with, uh, you know, we went with, I, I went with Avatar during our first recording. Because I do know of your, you know, obviously, you know, I've seen all of your uh, pushes to make sure. They just, just question the public. Like, do you remember yeah. anything about Avatar? Why are people, like, giving a damn about this, this, this movie? So I want to go with another... Another, you know, playing, you know, playing, playing towards uh, the audience, which is you here. Let's talk about the Emoji Movie. Oh, let's, let's see go. about, yeah, let's let's talk about this one here. I remember uh, being really into uh, wanting to see this movie, you know, for the goofs and gaffs. Uh, and I remember seeing a lot of your videos at the time. You got invited to the premiere. You were uh, you were big into just, uh, you know, just just propping this movie up where it belongs, man. But I will say. After the first year of its existence, I don't think I've seen or thought about this movie much. You know, like from yeah. 2017 to 2018, it was like the fun joke to make of like, yes. oh, this is how far cinema has fallen. I've seen right. the Emoji movie like three times. This is so funny. But then past 2018, I haven't thought about it much at all. I feel like it happened very shortly after the movie dropped, right? Like there yeah. was... People were joking about, like, before the trailer was out, people were just making fun of the concept. And then the trailer came out, and then that just, that exploded, because it's like, oh my god, it looks even worse than we thought. Yeah. And the movie came out, and we all laughed at the Rotten Tomatoes scores. Uh, and then that was it. And that's it. No one ever talks about it anymore. It's done. But boy, it was a fun meme. I loved memeing on that movie. <laughs> and uh, I remember, like, TJ Miller got a little defensive about it, uh, of my memeing of that movie on Twitter. Um, oh, man. TJ Miller, of course, who played Gene. The titular or the, the the main character of that movie i don't know he was like weirdly defensive of it it's like dude you don't have to defend this movie like <laughs> you got paid fine. that's all it is you got right you got yours <laughs> you don't have to like get up on your you know soapbox and say like um actually it's very inspiring like no buddy <sighs> um tomato meter wise i'm pretty sure the critic score is single digits uh, uh, it's it's below 10 percent. i think it's like fucking between three to five percent. Uh, I'm Damn. <laughs> I, think, I honestly, I I think from what I remember, I'm gonna guess 17. If you go 17, I go five. 
How's that? Okay. I'm gonna go five. I'm you cool go with 17. That. For the audience, it's I'm gonna bump that up to a a a much more respectable twenty. And not Damn. go a single number higher. I'm gonna go thirty three. From what I remember, I mean I, I feel like I don't know. I feel I feel like some like fifty year old parents might have gone like, Well that's cute <laughs> you know, like they're like the creatures right. on my phone. Oh, I'll I bring my kids to this. It is a, no, it's a family movie. It's something that you drag your kids into a theater for a few hours just to kill time. That that makes sense to me. Uh, what I really enjoyed was the um, the Rotten Tomatoes score. Because I remember, like, you know, I made a whole thing about it. And, like, I don't remember the score specifically, which makes this game a lot more fun. But I what I do remember is the critics' consensus, right? Like, so the blur, <laughs> yeah. is, right? Um, instead of writing any text, the single critic's consensus was just the the no emote. The oh, yeah. With the line through it. it was just, and that's it. That's all they wrote, which is great. Like, someone actually yeah. typed that. And I love that. Like, that was very apt. But let's see if either of us are, um, you know, on the money for this thing. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Well, uh -oh. to be fair, we both get a point. It's a 6%, <laughs> yes. which is why I was thinking 7 Yep. Uh, yep. But it's a 36 from the audience. How about that? So, there you go. That's fair. Right. When was the last time you saw this movie? I think I saw it last in 2018. The last time I saw this movie uh, was the world premiere. That Damn. Is the last, that's the first and last time I saw that movie in whatever well, uh, 2017. Well, I saw it illegally. I pirated it. Uh, oh, like, God. Well, I'm sorry. When this movie came out, I was working at a grocery store and I was trying to get a, a ragtag group of coworkers together <laughs> to see it at like the drive-in or something. And people were backing out. You know, they were like, oh yeah, sure. And Cowards. then no, no, Cowards, no, the lot no. of them. So that night I watched it pirated. Um, and, uh, you know, I convinced one of my friends to see it pirated the next day. Uh, and, uh, then we had something to discuss <laughs> and then, uh, uh, and, and then I bought it, you know, l legally. So then, you know, I, I could watch it whenever on my Apple device. To support the actors, you know, you gotta support. Of course. TJ yeah. Um, it. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just, I, I remember being able to vividly describe to you everything wrong with the movie. And I wish I had that spark back. I wish I had that yeah. spark back where I could describe the entire plot and say exactly where it fell flat. <laughs> I was where it did, but I kind of forget so much of it. I'd be down to rewatch it though. Would you? I think you would regret that five minutes in. Uh, it has to be something like, where I'm oh, with wait. I'm with my I'm with my friends and we just order like a nice nice old pizza and just sit there <laughs> and just 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 riff on it and just have a have a good old time, you know. I also remember very little, but what I do remember was that it was the worst kind of bad in that. It wasn't so bad. It's good. It was just bad. <laughs> yeah, it was really horrible. Have fun with it. No. Um, so, but I, you know what? That being said, maybe it is worth a pizza night with friends. Maybe. Um, if you ever do that, report back to me and let me know how that how that goes. I will. I will. I mean, like there, there's a lot of like plot, whatever, and everything's so forced in the movie to to keep it moving yeah. along. I think you could maybe have fun with that, but that—that's the only way that it's so bad. It's good. It's not even. It's not that. But you can have fun riffing on it. I think, like, just like as in, like, what? Like, why? Like, I remember at the end, like, whatever. He's about to delete his damn phone at the Apple Store. And I'm right, like, what? Right. Why? Why are you doing? This? And yeah, like, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Why does this girl? Why is this girl automatically interested in you just because you send an animated emoji? Like, what is going on there, man? It's dumb. No, that's well, how it works. Yeah. No. Well, I want to hear what your final movie is here. I got so many. I got. How about this? I'll let you choose. All right. I'll, okay. I'm going to whip out a few names at you, and you tell me you tell me if they strike your fancy. The Tom Cruise Mummy movie from 2017. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. The one that... Speaking of Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Well, they wanted to uh, They wanted to start a whole universe, cinematic yes! universe with that movie, and then immediately canceled it. The monster <laughs> cinema... Or the dark universe, they call it. Yeah. I think something like... Dracula. I got Waterworld from 95. Dude, Where's My Car? I saw that last year. I saw Dude, Where... I was thinking about Did doing you? Dude, where's, your, where's My Car? I think I'll go with Waterworld. That's kind of the classic, okay. you know, kind of bomb uh right. there which i don't think it was critically panned it was more so so hyped up 
and so expensive and it was kind of like oh damn this is it was a bit of like what avatar was but avatar at least delivered for most people i'd say not in terms of like oh man it's a cultural touchstone rather like ah oh, yeah that was a good time water world yeah. was kind of like that was just a mediocre movie it was stupid expensive didn't make the money back whatever i i think it's probably yes. in the 50s okay i think that's reasonable that doesn't shock me at all i've never seen it but the water world show at universal is great oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've like seen, you have like actors diving and yeah, I've seen and I've seen that. stuff on that. Yeah, that's a load of fun. I'm sure it's ten times better than the movie. Yeah, I find it very funny that they made a a show out of that. Out of all the movies, fucking Waterworld gets an attraction, <laughs> um, and you know, and they do it multiple times a day, daily. But anyways, never seen the movie. However, I'm I'm aware of how big of a bomb it was. Everything I have seen of the movie just looks dreary. And I mean, wet for lack of a better term, and just not visually appealing, just kind of this ugly shade everywhere. Which makes you question where all this money goes, man, with like a lot of yeah. these movies that are like hundreds of, like like Indiana Jones, uh, Dial of Destiny costs like 300 million. I'm like, where's that money going, man? To who? That makes no right. sense, yeah. No, it doesn't. It makes that no sense because really 200 million least, is usually kind of the max for most movies. That's right. like, oh, that's a blockbuster. When something goes beyond that, and probably with inflation, Waterworld is like crazy amounts, like probably around that that area. But it's just like, where, like, why? Especially when a movie turns out as lame looking as Waterworld. I think it's just like the sets. I think a lot more stuff was, pra like effects were practical back yeah. then and, and sets like actually building giant rafts to like either i don't know i have no idea i'm probably talking out my ass if they shot either on location somewhere in the ocean or in a giant like tank or some hybrid like a sound stage or some hybrid of the two i don't know but maybe that's where all the money went either way my guess is 50 i'm gonna say 59 i don't want to escape the 50s i know even though you said 50 i'm gonna say 59 audience is gonna be a little i'm gonna say 60 for the audience, six zero. Ah, oh, damn. Well, I I have sixty as well. Oh, you have sixty. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. You said sixty is. Oh, then never mind. I can't change that. Uh, I yeah, can, I was trying yeah, to okay, think then. like, what do we do in the case of a tie? <laughs> How about no? I need I need to change mine. All right, I'll bump mine up to sixty two. You should just go balls to the wall, go straight ninety or something. No, <laughs> no, Scott. Sixty two. Sixty two. Sixty two. A very boring sixty two for my audience score. Water and world. About... Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> I I put uh I did fifty five and sixty. Water world got a forty five from critics Woof. and a forty three from audiences. Yeah, that makes wow. more sense, honestly. I, I think I think I, I don't know, uh, going up in hindsight doesn't make as much sense because I feel like critics would have appreciated it more than audience. I feel like audiences are like, it's two hours long. I don't give a damn what's going on here. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. so yeah. yeah uh, so that means I get critic for you. and I also get uh, audience. Awesome. Damn, no, you blew me away with that one. Well, at this point, I definitely have one, but you know what? We gotta, we gotta round this out with one more, one more movie. And this one's worth 10 points, right? This one's worth 20 points. 20 points, sure. Why the hell not? Let's go for it. So uh, I'll just, I'll just rattle off the other movies I got on, on this list and you can pick whichever yeah, one hit you me. want. Yeah, all right. So uh, I did write down, uh, Freddy Got Fingered, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when I heard Tom Green from you. Zookeeper starring Kevin James. Ooh, okay. The Country Bears. The Disney movie, <laughs> uh, that that was like a, that that came out around the same time as like Pirates of the Car uh, Caribbean, and like I think that was like and, and the Haunted Mansion too. So Disney was trying to push oh. like turning their theme parks into movies, and what a one year. of them one of them was a success, and the others were the Country Bears and the Haunted Mansion. Right. Uh, you see the new Haunted Mansion they put out? I haven't seen it. I know that they did. They put well, they put it out in summer, which was like that doesn't make sense. Nah, uh, but it like but it also didn't do that super well critically. I saw or financially. That's a shame. Yeah, it's, it's just a shame. weird property to like reboot. I feel like, you know, like didn't we just see that? That's how I felt. Like, didn't we just do this? Maybe not. Yeah. But. Well, Haunted Mansion came out in two thousand three. I think I put it on oh, just wow. like whatever you know, DoorDash some food. And just sit down and like, ah, uh, 
yeah, why not that? <laughs> and and watch it, and it is a very forgettable. Just just go through the well, the two thousand three one with Eddie Murphy. The more modern one. It's a shame when like you reboot something that already wasn't a good movie. <laughs> And it also isn't a good movie, and I'm like, well, that was a Damn. waste of time and money, wasn't it? Right, What then what was the thinking behind that? Well, the other movies I got are Avatar 2 and Terror at Blood Fart Lake. So, uh, <laughs> you can... I'm torn between Terror at Blood Fart Lake, and then the... What was the first one? Oh, Freddy Got yeah. Fingered. Yeah. I'm torn between those two. Let's do Terror at Blood Fart Lake. I got Let's nothing on this one. one. I got nothing. <laughs> Me and my friends were randomly going on, like, you ever see, like, the, the garbage you see on Amazon Prime movies? Or something. The fact that pretty much anybody can put stuff on there. Have you ever browsed Tubi? Like, no. the movie streaming I'm app? I would recommend if you want just some raw d d stuff. There's some actual stuff on there a lot of the times. Like, it's kind of the stuff that, like, whatever. Like, we were talking about Space Jam 2. Like, they had that yeah. randomly. And it's a free streaming app. Like, you just download wow. it. It's, it's on, like, Roku and all that stuff. You can just look it up on your browser. Just stream it, like, on Netflix. And uh, they have like rent. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like the discount store for streaming. Sure. They'll get like the actual movies, but like usually when nobody cares about them, uh, and they leave pretty soon. But a lot of the stuff on there, they got they got all these dumbass B movies from like 2005 and on, or whatever, whatever. They got all kinds of stuff on there. Huh. Terror Blood for Lake is a very Tubi esque movie. It sounds and, like uh, from, just I just I'm trying to look up posters. Not much on it, man. I don't remember much. It's just a shitty little horror movie by like probably like ten people. <laughs> That's all. I, I love got. those though. I, I think I found like a poster, but another common poster is Return to Blood Fart Lake, the sequel, which I find very funny. Here's a question, Scott. Is this even on Rotten Tomatoes? Because I feel like this is one of those that might not have any reviews. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna shield anything. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Yep. 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 It is. I think this is going to be uh, an 83 for critics. Okay. And a, um, no, this is going to be an 8.3. How about 8% uh, critics and 50% audience? I'm sure there's a cult audience somewhere for this movie. So 8 and 50 for okay. Terror of Blood Fart Lake. I'll do your original score. I'll do 83. And then for <laughs> audience, go. I'll do I'll do a 97. <laughs> I love it. All right. I yeah. love it. Let's take Make a it peek. interesting. All right. Well, there's nothing on critic. Audience score is a 50% though. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I think you get five points. I don't care. I don't care if there's no let's critic go. score. You get five points. And then let's see. Let's see. You really uh, made a lot of strides in the end, but I still won by yeah. one point. No kidding. I'm shocked it's that close. But I know, it's crazy. It's all from the Blood Fart Lake portion, man. <laughs> you know your Blood Fart Lake lore. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a secret fan. Uh, <laughs> I just love loving my straight to Tubi originals. This was a hard game. This was a real head scratcher. I'm shocked I'm... at how bad I am at this. Listen, man, I'd be down to do this again. We got to do it with the... Uh... With uh, the we we were talking about it, the parents' guides on IMDb. I gotta find if there's anything, uh, any game I can make out of that. There's some funny yes. stuff, man. If I look up Terror at Blood Fart Lake on IMDb and see if it's okay <laughs> for my children, there's no way it's gonna be on there. Zero way that a dad was like, "All right, I'll check out Terror at Blood Fart Lake." Yeah. Well, this isn't great for my children. I'll, I'll write right. these down. Yeah. No, there's a parents' guide. Shut up. It does say, okay, sex and nudity is mild. The second point is a man is forced to crawl inside a woman's butthole. Her, his entire body goes inside her. So that's why it's mild. Got it. I that's, I love that that's written down in text form forever. 